I'm really excited about all those developments in Flink. I've been using Flink for about two and a half years now, and I look forward to every release. I follow it. It's fantastic. So thank you very much for the opportunity to tell you about one of the use cases that our team has been developing on Flink. If you're not familiar with Comcast, we're a global media and communications company. We have Comcast Cable, NBC Universal, and recently Sky in Europe. Our team is the customer experience technologies team. We're in Comcast Cable. We do the services to businesses and homes, such as internet, uh, voice, video, home security. And that's where I'll be concentrating today. So to give you a, a sense of the, the size and scale, Comcast has about 30 million uh, customer relationships, both uh, residential and business. Of those, 25 million are in the residential area in high-speed internet. So most of our customers subscribe to our high-speed internet, and that's where our use case focuses. And this area has been um, growing. We added about a million new ads to the uh, internet space uh, just last year. So what are we interested in? We want to deliver the ultimate customer experience. We like when the internet's working, everyone's happy, everyone's using it. Internet is really an essential part of most people's lives. I'm sure many of you use the internet every single day here. So is the customer having a good experience? I hope so. If not, can we find that out? If the customer has to engage with us digitally, can we offer them a self-service solution to be able to solve the problems themselves and go on their merry way? If that doesn't happen and they have to talk to an agent or uh, have a technician, can we give that agent and technician information, diagnoses uh, that can help them solve the problem faster? And really what it comes down to from a business perspective and from a customer perspective is, can we reduce the amount of time it takes to solve an issue? And can we reduce the cost both to the business and to the customer? So let's talk about cost and time for a second. If someone is able to self-service their issue, if they can resolve it, it costs almost nothing and it can take less than 15 minutes. That's, that's the best solution, right? You have a problem, you self-serve it, it's gone. If it can't be solved that way and you have to talk to an agent, the, you know, the order of magnitude in the industry is somewhere around five to $10. And you know, depending on the diagnosis and troubleshooting and such, it could take an hour, a little bit longer. If the problem is just something that can't be solved over the phone or self-service, a technician has to be dispatched to your house um, or, or to somewhere in the infrastructure, that's expensive. $50 to $100, making an appointment and keeping it, it could take a day or more. So we really want to shift as much as we can to the left, make this self-service fast and cheap. So how do we personalize this conversation? So this diagram represents the overall spectrum of delivery of high-speed internet. Um, painting a picture for each individual customer, taking the parts that are in the central office, billing, provisioning, uh, the sort of the, the root of the tree, if you can imagine a tree and its branches, it goes from a CMTS, a cable modem termination system, to nodes with fiber, and eventually to your neighborhood, and then to your house, your wiring, your cable modem, your gateway, and then your devices. So in this picture, we can see that maybe it's green, things are healthy up until the, the node level, and then something is wrong, something is red to the right. This indicates that probably we can't do a self-service solution. There's nothing that the customer can do in their house to solve this problem, although they can rest assured that there's probably someone already working on it because there are many alerts and monitors and such. Um, but we can communicate with the customer and say, you know what, thank you, uh, we're sorry you have an issue, someone's working on it, can we text you when it's all restored? So with these customer experience indicators, our high-level concept for our, our ecosystem is Let's have the producers of these systems, the owners of these systems, send us continuous data about the health of each and every customer's experience. We can take them into our Flink platform and produce diagnoses, recommendations for treatments, what can the customer do, or if we know that there's nothing the customer can do, we can say, really, you need to talk to an agent or schedule a technician for this particular problem. We can land those predictions, diagnoses, and treatments and to make them available for when the customer does engage with us through a customer engagement platform. Now, if you've worked with systems and all the data, you can see that all these systems are gonna be sending things like radio signals and uh, levels of power and all sorts of gobbledygook, thousands of lines of individual measurements, and they're really, really hard to discern. It's an interesting problem for 
data scientists, they love all this data. But from the point of view of trying to simplify this customer experience, we asked each of these producers of these systems all over the company, give us green if the customer's experience is good from the point of view of this system. Really, literally in the message, say customer is green. If the customer is having a bad experience, red. So we actually have the producers annotate each of these messages with red or green. So what is the digital experience from the customer's point of view? So let me paint you a little scenario. My 11-year-old son wakes up at 6 in the morning every Saturday and Sunday. He actually sets his alarm so he can go downstairs and watch videos and play computer games. We, we let him do that so he doesn't wake us up. So my nightmare scenario is I'm sleeping, enjoying it, want to wake up at 8 o'clock to have my coffee, and I hear from downstairs, Dad, YouTube's not working. Oh, I would like to solve this as quickly as possible. So if you are a Comcast customer, and on your phone you have the My Account app, um, don't install it now, but you can wait until later and try it out if you're a Comcast customer. The first thing I see is, hey, Dave, anything we can help you today? If you press that button, you're starting to engage with the platform that Flink is a part of. Sure, I'm typing in, my internet is slow. And I press the button and, Flink power! Oh, that was very powerful. Actually, the, the Flink stuff happened in the background. It had already processed all my customer indicators. It already has the diagnoses and the treatments already and available in the engagement platform. So as soon as I press that button, I'm getting back, hey, I've noticed a problem that should be resolved by restarting your gateway. Would you like to do that? I'm like, yes, I want to go back to sleep. I haven't even got out of bed, I'm on my phone. I've sent the signal to start troubleshooting. It should be back in 10 minutes. The longest 10 minutes of my life, or my son's life here, waiting for the internet to come back on. Device restart in progress, a couple minutes later. Device restart completed. Now what's really important is the next step. I'm also getting an SMS that asks me, hey, has your problem been fixed, yes or no? And this is important for multiple reasons. First of all, it's summarizing my interaction and saying it's restarted. Is it fixed or is it not fixed? Um, if, it, if so, it's great. If it's not, it'll offer to connect me to an agent to diagnose further. But what's also important is from the machine learning perspective, we're able to close the loop, not only with the customer, but use the response to gauge whether our predictions were actually useful in solving the problem. So what is the platform that's underneath this? It is powered by Apache Flink. Last year, my colleague Samir and I presented our ML operationalization framework, and this use case is running on that framework. Using Kafka, the customer experience Data points are flowing in continuously. We're using Flink state to trigger and deter determine when we're going to produce a new diagnosis. If you follow the bottom path, it's going through the machine learning uh, platform of assembling features, which is basically the previous uh, data points that have been collected uh, and that is also stored in the Flink local state. It's executing the model. It's storing the predictions in the data store. On the top line, is the path that we're using for um, future machine learning. So we're saving to a historical data store all the history so we can feed that into model training and retraining. And there's also an online feature store for external consumers to be able to use that data and for the platform to get the up-to-date uh, features. Hasn't all been you know, roses and dandelions and stuff. We had a lot of challenges along the way in the past year. I'll be speaking about these challenges later in the day in technical session. But I would like to talk about volume and state for a second. So when we went live with this system to production uh, about July of last year, it's about the center of this diagram, we had four different customer experience indicators and the volume was around 200 million per day. By October, we had ramped up a few more indicators and we were at one billion per day. That's pretty good. A month later, we were at two billion. That's not enough. Let's add another three billion data points per day. So when we turned on the indicators for the actual gateway devices and their health, some of those models would send health indicators as, as frequently as every 90 seconds. Most of them are kind of in the five or 10 minute range. So we would be getting another three billion data points. And there are actually two of these. Oh no. Okay. Yeah. So. How do we meet this challenge? Very, very simply, Flink enabled us to scale 
as much as we needed to. Horizontal scaling, any Flink cluster, it was very simple to just reconfigure and scale out to more machines and nodes as needed. Uh, we also had to do some vertical scaling where we took different pieces of our platform and moved them to their own separate Flink clusters. So we had multiple clusters doing specific parts of that flow that I showed you earlier. And really, taking advantage of all the Flink features, the state, um, the uh, uh, conjoining streams, uh, syncs to be able to write to our data store, checkpointing, Global Windows, it all enabled us to write this platform pretty easily. So let me show you how we use state to trigger the diagnosis. At any given time, we're storing in Flink state this set of indicators for any, every customer, red, green, 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 red, green, hopefully they're all green, but there might be a red in there. As additional data points flow in, we're storing them in the state, and that's, that's really one or two lines of code. It's not really a big deal. However, when we detect that there's a change, so that bottom one went from green to red, we detect that in our, our state operator, and then we say, we're gonna trigger an output diagnosis, so we send that set down the line to the uh, machine learning platform. Last year, it seemed like in every presentation, one of the most frequently asked questions was, how big is your state? So I thought I would just address this right here. We have two different states. The, um, the red-green data state, we have about 10 different indicators right now. We're just storing the, the entity ID and the type and the state. It's very small, it's about one gigabyte for all 25 million customers continuously. For the feature store, where we're storing not only those indicators, but also the raw data for uh, future use and historical, that's a bit bigger, it's about a terabyte total because some of those features can be as much as 15 KB and JSON, some of them are smaller, but it's about a terabyte. However, Flink makes it really easy to manage the state. It's very, very simple code. So where are we today? We have a number of indicators that in total are about 725 million per day, plus or minus a few million, uh, and we're, we're adding indicators all the time. Those two high volume indicators are another six billion per day. So this platform is now processing six billion data points per day. The size of our cluster, we have 14 Flint clusters, 150 VMs, about 1,100 CPU, and uh, about six terabytes of um, RAM. And we're on AWS for this. So what are the business results? So I can't give you the exact numbers, um, but multiple millions of individual customers have been served by this engagement platform. We have metrics, we have shown that we have saved operationally many millions of dollars. What's really important, we've, we've increased customer satisfaction and we measure that because when you can solve something in a self-service way and be on your way in 15 minutes, it feels good. Self-service means you're in control and you're not inconvenienced by having to wait a day or two for a solution. And we've reduced the time to solve these problems. But really, with this platform, we have these seven billion data points but we're scaling it down to one, the individual customer's experience. So before I close, I just wanna mention two things. Later in the day, in fact, the last session of the day, I'll be going into much deeper technical discussion on those nine challenges that we faced and how we addressed each one. Uh, I had to change the name of the slide. I, I wrote it several months ago as five billion, we're at seven billion per day now. Maybe it's eight, I don't know. And secondly, we are hiring. We're based in beautiful Philadelphia in the new uh, Comcast Technology Center, a 60-story skyscraper, but we have offices in Washington, Sunnyvale, Mountain View, and uh, Denver. So please come see us during the day. Thank you very much.